Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Adventures for Kids. Today, August the 1st, 2021. Now, for students, that means that you are only, hmm, I think five or six weeks away from going back to school. So you should be excited. Okay, well, we're excited that you're here today. Now, today's agenda, today's agenda, we're going to have a verse. We're going to learn or review a verse today. Um, we're gonna, I say review because it's a verse that most of our Sunday school students have memorized. And uh, you may be familiar with this verse. It is a very, name this creature. We're going to have, name this creature, but today we're going to have eight clues. And the reason for eight clues, because the first few are going to be tough. Um, so uh, keep, I was in school, we used to, the teacher would say, put on your thinking cap. So today you're going to have to put on your thinking cap for this one. It's going to be good. And then we'll have God as the greatest designer. Because you already know that God is the greatest designer. God is the greatest designer. So we'll show another reason today why God is the greatest designer. And then we'll have a lesson for today. And actually I have uh, something I'd like to show you. Um, with regard to the lesson. So with that said, we'll get started. Thank you very much for joining us today, and we will start with our verse. And again, most of you may already know this, but it's good to learn it again. Okay, here we go. Okay, I think you already know the whole verse just by these first six words. I'll say it, and then you say it along with me. For God so loved the world. Say it with me. For God so loved the world. Again, for God so loved the world. And again, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Let's say it all together. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Again, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. One more time. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him, okay, all together. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him, again, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him, one more time, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The whole verse all together. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him not perish, but have everlasting life. You memorized 25 words. Fantastic. Now who knows where you find this in the Bible? By a show of hands. Where is it? Let's see. You were right. John chapter 3, verse 16. Okay, everyone, all together. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. John chapter 3, verse 16. All the boys. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. John chapter 3, verse 16. Now all the girls. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. John chapter 3, verse 16. One final time, everybody all together. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. John chapter 3, verse 16. Fantastic verse. If you have not memorized it already, memorize that verse. It is fantastic. Okay, now we need everybody to sit up nice and straight because we're going to do this. Eight clues. And we're going to start. Name this creature. Are you ready? First clue. If you think you know it, even after the first clue, um, say it out loud. You got the first clue already. Some can weigh up to 18 kilograms or 40 pounds. Hmm, interesting. 
So we know it's not real big, um, but 18 kilograms, 40 pounds is a good size. Okay, do you think you know? Number two, a group of my species is called a set. Huh? Huh? Hmm. You know what? I think you might say that a few times today. Huh? Okay. I'm going to repeat it, and then you say huh with me. A group of my species is called a set. Huh? Okay. Let's try number three. Okay. I can have three-inch claws. Ooh. Pretty long claws. 40 pounds. A group of my species is called a set and three-inch claws. Let's go for number four. My home is called a burrow. Aha, uh -huh. good clue. My home is called a burrow. What do you think it is? Do you know? Number five. I can live up to 12 years. Hmm, that doesn't give you a whole lot of information, but it's something else. Okay, number six. Guys, then females. Hmm, interesting. But you know what? That happens a lot um, in the animal world. A lot of times the males are larger in size than the females. Okay, you know what? We're going to do a little review, and then we're going to do the last two. If you know what it is, yell it out loud. Be the first one. Some can weigh up to 18 kilograms or 40 pounds. A group of my species is called a set. I can have three-inch claws. My home is called a burrow. I can live up to 12 years, and males are larger in size than females. Number seven. I can have a really bad attitude. Oh, really? I hope that's not you. Only this creature. I hope that's not you. But this creature can have a really bad attitude. And I'm going to tell you about it shortly. Okay, final clue. Here it is. My name means digger. Hmm, is that a good enough clue? Okay, final review, then we're going to reveal. Some can weigh up to 18 kilograms or 40 pounds. A group of my species is called a set. I can have three inch claws. My home is called a burrow. I can live up to 12 years. Males are larger in size than females. And I can have a really bad attitude. And my name means digger. On the count of three, here we go. One, two, three. Here it is. Hmm, do you know what that is? Let's see the name. It's a badger. It is a badger. Now, uh, did anybody guess it was a badger? Hmm, uh, a couple people. Okay, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about this bad attitude badger. Bad is even in its name. Okay, so there are eight species of badgers ranging, ranging across several continents, including North America, Africa, Europe, and Asia. So they're found in a lot of different places all over the world. Okay, now a badger is an omniferous, nocturnal, semi fossil plantigrade mustelid mammal. Huh? What does that mean? Okay, you know what? We'll explain it. Okay, a badger is a plant and meat eating, omniferous, active during the night, nocturnal, lives underground, semi force reel, walks on its entire foot, means it's a plantigrade, and it's a member of the weasel family, so it's a mustelid. Um, the first part is a little more difficult than when you get the explanation. So it likes to eat plants and meat, goes out at night, lives underground, walks on its feet, member of a weasel family. Okay, let's learn a little more. The word badger comes from the French word bichur, meaning digger. His name means digger and is extremely appropriate. Everything about the badger's body says dig. And if you can see the bottom pictures here, um, look at those claws. <laughs> this creature can dig. Can you dig it? Okay, let's go to the next one. Okay, we got some fast facts. Okay, get ready. This is gonna be fast. Males are called boars. Females are called sows. Youngs are called cubs. The social unit, according to science, it's a group. Hmm, high tech. Okay, a group is called a clan or a set. Okay, they are found in North America, Asia, Europe, and Africa. Habitat, they like to live in the grasslands and their favorite food, mice and snakes. 
maybe in snake salad. Enemies, coyotes and eagles. They are not in danger. They can run 19 miles per hour. So they can actually run pretty fast. Um, gender difference, males are larger than the females, just like in the clues. Okay, claw length, one to two, two to three inches. Average height, up to 16 inches. Average length, 36 inches. Average weight, up to 40 pounds, just like in the clues, 18 kilograms. Okay, now they're usually raised by their mother. The mother usually have two to five of them. At birth, they are blind and have fine hair. Um, at birth, I had hair, but they have fine hair. Their eyes open up at three to four weeks. They're mature after a year. They live up to 12 years. Fast facts on this badger. It's a badger. Yeah, okay. One of the more curious badger facts is that a large part of their diet is earthworms. They eat a lot of worms. Badgers are stoutly built, short, wide, powerful, and cantankerous carnivores. Huh? Cantankerous? You know what? I thought we'd look the definition of cantankerous. The definition of cantankerous means bad-tempered, difficult, or irritating to deal with. Now, I have a little experiment I'd like you to try with your parents. If you want to see your parents squish their face and tilt their head. Go, huh? Here's what you say. The word cantankerous means bad tempered. So I want you to go to your parents, one of your parents, and say, I will not be cantankerous today. I will not be difficult. And let me know the response you get from your parents. I think they might go, huh? If you walk up to them and say, Today, I will not be cantankerous. Try it. Let me know how it goes. You will not be bad-tempered like the badger today. Okay, so let's continue on here. Badgers live in huge underground burrows that can include up to half a mile or 0.8 kilometers of tunnels. They dig a lot of tunnels. So it's no surprise that they eat a lot of worms. They're in there digging their tunnel, and they come across a worm. Oh, lunch. And then they keep on going. So... Lots of tunnels for badgers. It has massive shovel-like front paws. Take a look at the picture on the side here and look at the size of the claws. Five powerful toes and one website said each tipped with curved claws as strong as steel. Very strong. They are meant to dig. And the name means digger. They can move yards of dirt in minutes, barreling in headfirst with long digging strokes with their front claws and quick earth-moving shoves backwards like they're running. The front claws go out and dig, and the back legs kick the dirt out. So it's like they're running. Here's something else really cool. A badger being pursued by a large predator, if it's being chased by a large predator like a wolf or a mountain lion, it can actually dig backwards with its fangs facing out front for protection and disappear beneath the soil in a matter of seconds. They can dig the dirt out backwards, facing and pushing the dirt out frontwards. Fantastic animal. They are awesome diggers. Did you know that badgers have a third eyelid that protects their eyes while they dig? Designed by God. That's awesome. Sense of smell is very powerful, and they can detect an animal in its burrow through soil or through the dirt. They can smell through the dirt. If another animal comes into where they live, their burrow, they can smell them through the dirt or even through the snow. Tremendous. Are badgers dangerous? That's a good question. Are badgers dangerous? Badgers are wild creatures of destructive temperament and aggressive behavior. They are dangerous, but they aren't detrimental as long as you don't annoy them or cause them any discomfort. What that means is if you come across a badger, they are saying, leave me alone. And the best thing for you to do is leave them alone because they got a bad attitude. Badger. Bad attitude. They are cantankerous, 
remember to tell your parents that you will not be cantankerous today. Okay, let's continue on. When they locate their prey, they dig rapidly, directly down into the animal's den, and in a devastating surprise attack from above, they get their meal. Surprise attack. Creature that you could cuddle? No. The honey badger has a reputation for being one of the most fearless and relentless like the marine technology inspired by dolphin speed. Interesting. So, according to Gray's paradox, then they should be able to. Interesting. So the scientists are looking at the dolphins and saying, by the shape of them, how can they swim so fast? They're trying to figure out why they are able to swim that fast. Okay. The next part, scientists Frank Fish. Now, I have to stop here for a minute. The guy's name is Frank Fish. He's studying dolphins. <laughs> I thought that was kind of cool. Frank Fish is a scientist at the West Chester University. He researches dolphins and how they can move through the water. It says, Fish, who has researched dolphin drag and propulsion. Drag means when they're going through the water, the water is pushing against them, slowing them down. How could it go so fast? He recently published a review in Bioinspiration and Biomimetics. Biomimicry, borrowing from God's design. He published a review examining the different mechanism, mechanisms of drag reduction. How come dolphins can go through the water so fast? And after all their studies, the results were the dolphin still possesses superior swimming capabilities compared with technologies from nautical engineering. Nautical engineering is when people study stuff that move through the water. Dolphins, after all their testing and all the creating of things that they did, possess superior swimming capabilities compared to everything else. Incredible. So, a quote from another part of the article says submarine and autonomous underwater vehicles, vehicles that are remote controlled, may benefit from copying the body design of dolphins to enhance not just speed, but also maneuverability. So not just by how fast they go, but how they can move as well. So that was one design that they came up with, but there was another one. The structure of dolphin skin and its underlying blubber may serve as a model for future wetsuits. Incredible! Applied to competition suits from vibrations and folds produced by swimming motions of human swimmers. So people going through the water, these suits designed after dolphin skin will help humans go through the water faster. And it even goes on to say perhaps swimmers in the next Olympics will wear suits based on dolphins to break existing records. Suits based on dolphins. Incredible. So, God has designed an intelligent creature that can easily glide through water in a way that man does not fully understand. With all the different technology, they still can't understand how it can go through the water so easy. Man is studying the design of the dolphin with the possibility of making two designs that will improve our lives. One is submarines and autonomous underwater vehicles may benefit from the copying of the body design of dolphins. Copying God's design. Also, the elastic structure of the dolphin's skin may serve as a model for future wetsuits or competitive swimsuits. Two designs. So man is again borrowing from one of God's designs. So the question is, who is the greatest designer? God is the greatest designer. Fantastic. That is cool stuff. God is the greatest designer. Okay, so today's lesson. Today's lesson, okay, I said I wanted to show you something. I want to show you something. Okay. Anybody know what these are? Let's see. Ah! Up oh, too close. Anybody know what these are? 
These are called binoculars, okay? Now, what are binoculars for? Does anybody know? What are binoculars for? Well, they're, for, they're used for hiking, traveling, astronomy, camping, bird watching, sports, military, hunting, concerts. People use binoculars for a lot of different things. But there's a reason why they use binoculars. Look at something. Binoculars let you see things that are far away, brings them close. So to get a close look at something is why people use binoculars. So, the name of today's message is getting a better look. Better look. Binoculars can be a very important tool for people when they are far away and want to see things up close. Binoculars remind me that we need to look closely at the Bible, God's Word. We need to take a closer look. We need to get a better look. A lot of times we read the Bible just because we think we have to or because we're told to. Today, I want to encourage all of us to take a closer look at God's Word, the Bible, getting a better look. Do we ever read it, the Bible, to find out what it means or why God wrote it? The Bible is full of examples of how we should live. The stories in the Old Testament aren't there to just teach us a history lesson. They are there to help us to find out how to live with each other and how to obey God in every situation. Lots of things that we can read, lots of different stories, events that we can read in the Old Testament. They're meant to teach us something. But are we looking closely? Are we looking closely at God's Word? Getting a better look. The New Testament is an amazing place in the Bible. The Bible is divided into the Old Testament and the New Testament. The New Testament is an amazing place to find out God's promises and the message of the Gospel. Getting a better look. The message of the Gospel is the best news in the world. The message of the gospel is the best news in the world. And if you want to get the message of the gospel, the good news, in one verse, you already know it. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. The best news in the world. God loves you and he sent his son to die for you. And whosoever, that means you, whosoever believes in him, Jesus, shall not perish but have eternal life. That is the best news in the world. And you can find that out and understand it by getting a better look at the Bible. Think of all the information that God wants us to know from the Bible. Just think of what we could learn if we looked a little closer. What are some things that God wants us to learn? There's several. But what are some things God wants us to learn from his word, the Bible? Okay, getting a better look. God wants us to learn about a problem that we have, that all of us have. It's called sin. For all have sinned. All. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans chapter 3, verse 23 in the New Testament. All of us are sinners. We can read, if we take a closer look, if we get a better look at the Bible, we can read how sin started. We can read how it affects all of us. And we can read about what God has done about it, about sin. But let's answer this question. What is sin? And if you have joined us before, you would have heard this answer many times. What is sin? Sin is all of the bad things that we think, all of the bad things that we say, and all of the bad things that we do. 
God calls it sin. Have sinned. And because all have sinned, that's actually kind of, kind of bad news. We're all sinners. It's kind of bad news. But if we look closely to God's word, we can see that there's good news. That Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Has there ever been a time in your life where you accepted that, that you could say to yourself, I am the sinner that Christ Jesus came to save? Getting a better look. We can learn of how sin started in the Bible. We can learn of how sin affects all of us in the Bible. And we can learn about what God has done about it in the Bible. The verse we have here in Romans chapter 5. But God commendeth or demonstrated. God has demonstrated his love toward us. In that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. God has demonstrated his love. God loves you. Love toward us, toward you, the while love toward us, toward you, the while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Getting a better look. Make sure we get a better look into the Bible because there is good news. When we look closely, we will understand who Jesus came to save and why. In our verse today, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, that's, in, that's you, whosoever believeth in him, in Jesus, should not perish, but have everlasting life. Did you know that God loves you? And like we already said, God has demonstrated his son, even though we're sinners, sending his son to die on the cross for our sins. Getting a better look. God loves you so much that he sent his son to die on the cross for your sins. He did not only die on the cross. He was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. When you take a close look at the scriptures, God's word, the Bible, you will see that he didn't just die. He rose again on the third day according to the scriptures, just like the Bible said. 